Hello everyone, this is Jeff from WiFiCastle.com. This video will explain the WNDR3700 from Netgear. It is a dual band wireless router, meaning it can run in the 5 and 2.4 gigahertz wireless network ranges. And it has 4 gigabit LAN ports on the back. So it's a, it's a good router for any home network. Um, the dual band's going to come in handy because the DirecTV uh, home network, if you have that new service, uh, it will not run on the 5 gigahertz net. And Xboxes uh, won't run on it either unless you go out and buy a 5 gigahertz network card. Now you will have to go out and buy a 5 gigahertz network card for laptops or workstations, whatever else you want to connect to the 5 gigahertz net. Uh, the good part is, 5 gigahertz will give you better throughput. The bad part is it, um, it doesn't have as uh, wider range as the 2.4. The distance isn't as good. So keep that in mind when you experiment with this router. Start with the basic settings on the left side. It's going to ask you, does your internet connection require a login? You're going to say no unless you have a PPoE DSL connection. If you don't know what that means, you probably don't have it, which means you're going to say no here. That means the router is going to get uh, its IP address from the ISP, make sure this is checked, and make sure that your DNS servers you're getting it from the ISP, and you're going to want to use the default MAC address of the router. On the next screen, which is here, the wireless settings. This is where you enable the SSID broadcast for the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz networks. Remember, you're running two networks here. So you're going to have to name them different things. Uh, they're on a different band, so these are you're going to have two separate wireless networks going in your house or business, wherever you're going to put this thing. So if you want the 2.4 gigahertz network to be broadcast, meaning that when wireless network cards go out and scan for networks, they're going to find this one. Uh, click this button. I've named mine home base. I've set the channel to auto, and the mode here is 130 megabits per second. As it says over here in the instructions, uh, 130 is all you can do for the 2.4 gigahertz because that allows the BGNN. If you switch it up to 300, then G network cards won't work anymore. You're going to have N only. And remember that the DirecTV, Xbox, all that stuff, that comes with G unless you buy something else. Of course, DirecTV doesn't have a network card you can add to it at this point. So in my situation with the DirecTV internal network running on the 2.4, running a G card, I have to keep this at 130 megabits per second. Choose your security options. This is what I suggest here, WPA2, PSK, AES, that's the best throughput. Choose your passphrase here. And then as you scroll down, you're going to do the same thing for the 5 gigahertz net. Now you want to name it something different than you do up here because they're two different networks. So I've named this one home base 5G, which means you know, it's the 5 gigahertz network, so that's the one I want to connect to most of the time. I've enabled the SSID broadcast, and I've enabled the video network. I mean, that's an experiment. Uh, do some streaming at the castle here uh, from my media server in one room over a wireless connection to the uh, plasma TV in the other. So I've enabled this, and HD video seems to flow pretty well, so I'm keeping it checked. Uh, the channel here, you can pick whatever you want. I've picked with uh, 36, mainly because I don't have any other 5G networks around me. So it doesn't really matter what channel I select here. And then here, up to 300, because I have N cards that are 5 gigahertz enabled. Click your uh, security options here, same thing. Choose your key, hit apply, and keep on going. The next uh, option here is pretty neat. It's the guest network. It's right here on the left. And this enables you to enable uh, 
a guest wireless network, meaning it will not be able to get, people who get on this network won't be able to get to anything on your home or business network. It's internet only. So if you want to do this, you can. Uh, if you have people coming in and out of your place and you don't want them to get on your home network but you want them to get on the internet, you can enable this guest. Same thing here. You would enable the guest network here. You would enable the SSID broadcast. You would name it. I don't know why you would do this, but you want to allow guests to access your local network. You might as well have them get on the main networks anyway. And for your security options, it would be the same thing as what we just set up before. So it's an option. Uh, I don't use it here, but it's definitely at your disposal. The next thing we should do here is set the password. And that's found in the maintenance section at set password. So you click this here, you get to here, old, new, repeat hit apply. That's very important. Make it difficult to get in or everything else we're doing is moot. The next section here is the advanced wireless settings. That is found under the advanced section in wireless settings. Makes sense. Here you can turn on and off your radios if you need to and change some of these uh, settings here to make quality a little bit better depending upon what's going on around you. Uh, obviously this should be checked, enable and enable. If they're not enabled, of course the wireless network is off and that takes care of that. Uh, the only thing that I've messed with here, because uh, everything else works well, the defaults, is the transmit power. Uh, for the 5 gigahertz range, I would, I'm always staying at 100, mainly because again, it doesn't get the same distance as the 2.4. Uh, gigahertz network. So I leave this at 100, but the 2.4, because it has more distance, I've tuned this down to 75, uh, mainly because I have a lot of 2.4 gigahertz networks around me. When I turn it down to 75, that reduces the radius of the network and it allows um, just my clients uh, to get on. WPS down here, uh, I'm sure you've seen this. Uh, it can automatically connect. If you have a WPS enabled device, it will ask you for a pin code to connect directly to the router. Uh, and here's that code. And then once they enter the code, then it keeps the settings right here. The next thing you want to do is set up your LAN. If you have a different IP address than what the default is uh, for the Netgear, it's always good to change uh, your default LAN setup, mainly because uh, the 192.168.1 or 192.168.0, that's a very common uh, LAN network setup. It could interfere with VPNs to your work. Um, it's good just to change it. And so if you, uh, you want to change it, uh, you can do that here. And I've changed mine uh, to this network here. So once you change the LAN setup, uh, you'll want to use your router as a DHCP server. And that means it will give out addresses to anyone who connects to it. Mine, of course, is not checked because I have a Windows network running inside the house here. So it's not a DHCP server. In most cases, though, you'll want this checked uh, to use the router as a DHCP server, meaning it will give out IP addresses to everyone who connects to it. Okay, let's move on to the router status. This is always something to look at if you want to see what's going on with your uh, wireless router. That's in the maintenance section, router status. Uh, you've got your hardware version up here. You've got all the network information through here. Uh, this is the internet port to the internet service provider. So this is the address that it's given me, DHCP and so forth. And that should do it.
for the Netgear WNDR3700 setup. Uh, if you go out and get this router, I'm sure you'll be impressed. Thanks a lot for watching, and goodbye.